Yeah, let's talk about it. So this was a really, really rough tournament for me. Um, there was multiple factors heading into this that were just kind of stacking up against me when it came to competing at my highest level and performing uh, good. So just to start off, the week prior for me at work was ridiculous. Um, a lot of late nights and a lot of early mornings and it was just one of those things where you can only do it so many times before you just kind of get run down and that whole week was just very taxing. So before we even left to cold, before we even left for cold water, I was mentally out of it. I did not want to get out of my bed Saturday morning to drive two and a half hours to cold water. I just was just I just wanted to sleep. I just want to relax. But that's life. And I said, suck it up, buttercup, you've been here before. And so just heading on our way there I wasn't really in the right headspace there's also also multiple other factors that were playing into this as well when it came to stressing about this tournament that week or this this week of cold water was also minster and minster was also a doubles point event and at the time heading into it I was uh, still in the hunt for player of the year and that's kind of my whole focus of this year is trying to win player of the year. That's something I've come up short now in the past two years. And uh, it's a goal of mine I really want to achieve. And when I knew I wasn't going to get to Bullminster and all the guys who were right behind me were, I kind of got, I'd say a little salty, but I uh, kind of got frustrated because I obviously can't take off work and I uh, got to do what I can at, at cold water. So going into cold water after seeing that Ryan Lederbach went three peak, congrats to him, that's awesome, went three in a row, winning at Minster, and then also Gene Perez making the step ladder there in Minster, I kind of saw my whole hope of winning player of the year just kind of just get shot. And so when I got to cold water, not only was I tired, fatigued, a little frustrated, um, I was also like pressing hard to try to run down points and try to get myself back in this race for this uh, player of the year thing. And well, when you stack all that up, it's not a good equation for a successful event. So yeah, that's where we started. But let's talk about the bowling kind of went, went wrong. We got there and we were watching a little bit of A Squad. It looked like typical cold water, nothing really out of the ordinary. It looked hard. It looked like you had to be accurate and be precise. So when we were getting ready to bowl, I kind of just in my mind said it's the same thing as last year. In a sense, they're different pattern, but same idea, keep it in front of you, make your spares and you'll be fine. And for me, because of the big start I had last year, I kind of built up in my head I was gonna do that again. And so we go out in game one and I have a look, but not the look. And what happened was, is game one, I should have shot 220, 230, and ended up shooting 190. I'm sorry, 184. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, um, is this is this a look, you know? And kind of in my mind, I'm like, you know you're doing the right thing because the ball's getting to the hole, you just need to find a way to make it strike. So I'm like, that's okay, we'll go to game two. In game two, again, I had an opportunity to shoot 220 or 230 going into the ninth frame. And I'm shooting 197. So now all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I just had two games back to back where it could have been 50 or 60 over and currently I am sitting at minus 19. What in the world's going on? And then game three, I'm like, okay, just make shots, keep it in front of you, you'll be fine. And again, another good game strung together to finish at 199. Now, we're gonna pause here because I'm currently 20 under after the first three games. Now, the cut, at the time I didn't know it was gonna be this, I kinda had an idea, but the cut ended up being 30 something under. And so, looking at this now, and actually looking at this on the way home, I realized that I was kind of in a good spot there. I wasn't really throwing it perfect, and I didn't really have the best ball reaction, but I had nine. <laughs> like, it's cold water. You, you just take nine and run with it. And so, after game three, looking at it now, I should have just kept throwing urethane, getting nine, until I saw the lanes get to a place where I could have moved in. But then the worst thing that could happen, happened. I was watching Nick Pate and AJ Johnson to my right, and they were both lighting it on fire. I mean, 
I think they're both 100 over after three, and I'm just watching them strike forever. The worst thing you could possibly do, especially when they're hard, is look at somebody else's success and go, I'm gonna do exactly that and then try to do it. Because what happens is, is you can't do what they do exactly. Now you can get close, don't get me wrong, I could have got close and I did, but I couldn't do it the way they were. Their bowling ball were, their bowling balls were going through the pins and seeing the lane in a way that I just couldn't. My speed was a little too low, rev rate a little too high. I didn't match up in the same sense they did. But after being 20 under after three games and me kind of going, uh, I gotta find something, you make a rash decision and you try to force an outcome. And that's exactly what happened after game three. I jumped way in, I got in front of the ball return. Now, do I think this was the wrong move? Yes and no. I think I could have made it work, but I don't think I needed to do it. We'll just put that out there. Well, what happened was is I made the big jump left trying to do what Nick Pate and what AJ Johnson were doing, and I ended up shooting 147 in game four. And that just came from me foreseeing an outcome. I was super anxious. I was kind of like, got to make this happen. And you try to force an outcome, which tightens up the swing and makes everything a much bigger deal than what it really is. And you kind of implode. And that's exactly what happened in game four and I shot 147. Now you would think, you would think that after shooting 147, I would just take a step back and be like, okay, Let's reset, let's reevaluate, what are we doing wrong? No, what proceeded to happen is the next two games after that, I keep beating my head into the wall. And it was just rough. Shot 182 in game five and shot 158 in game six. And it was finally after game six where I was like, okay, dude, what are we doing? What is going on? Like mentally out of it, I was to the point where I was ready to leave the bowling alley. I, never wanted to quit a tournament until that one and I'm like this isn't me this isn't who I am why in the world am I so frustrated and then it kind of all brought back to me like this is just a result of the week you had and the lack of focus on recovery and things you need to be focused on and I kind of just took a moment after game six and was like okay you're here you're obviously not gonna make the number let's figure out what's going on so I stepped over to the side. Uh, Nick Pate was just the, the pair to my right. He's 150 over, he's crushing it. And so I just walked over to Nick. I said, Nick, what am I missing? What in the world are you seeing that I am not? And I'm very grateful for Nick, uh, for Nick uh, because he just sat back for about five, 10 minutes in between shots and just talked to me about everything that I wasn't doing right. And the next two games showed exactly what I was doing wrong. And I am very grateful for Nick. And I'm also very grateful what he pointed out because it made me realize things I was doing wrong that I didn't know I was doing wrong. Nick basically told me, your bowling ball is either seeing it way too soon or not enough. And what happens is, is it sees it too soon and you move too far right. So then you move left and then it doesn't see it at all. And he basically told me, your bowling ball is just too forward. Now, he didn't say that, but that's kind of what I heard, and it started to click, because the past three or four months, especially after the World Series, everything I've done is try to throw it dead forward into the floor and get it start up. And it's kind of led through this progression of me just not matching up at any tournament I go to anymore, and like I'm clawing and fighting my way into match plays. What I did the last two games is I decided, okay, we're gonna go back to what I was feeling at the World Series when obviously I was bowling great. What, what did I feel there that feels different now? Well, I definitely feel like my thumb was coming over the ball more, kind of like opening a doorknob. So the last two games, I moved further left. I got into, I think it was a Pride Liberty. And I said, you know what? We're just gonna work on getting around the ball and making the ball be more continuous through the pins. And I ended up going 233 and 193. And the only reason I didn't shoot something bigger that last game is because we were on this really awful pair where I threw two shots, both on strikes, one on a double, that both went through the face out of nowhere. And so it's just a rough pair. I am extremely grateful for Nick for pointing that out to me because it also made me realize that sometimes you become a product of your environment. And I've been bowling a lot of tournaments to where I end up throwing your thing straight into the ground, trying to get to start up, and I'm trying just to blend the whole lane by making the ball see at the first 10 feet. And then it really hinders me when I have to move left. The past three or four months, I haven't been able to strike in front of the ball return. 
and that has been a product of the bowling I've been doing on these patterns and with these conditions. And it also made me realize that if I ever want to go out and compete uh, at any level, I need to be able to bring back the versatility in playing straight and playing for the left. I can't just hammer on urethane straight up five anymore. So after those last two games and seeing that realization and my wife telling me I just need to be better, we went back home and practiced and I didn't even bother pulling the urethane ball out. I went straight to reactive resin. I tried to get as far left as fast as I could and work on getting my hand around the ball. And I will tell you y'all, it is amazing how far you can wander because of your environments. And I realized how bad I was at playing left anymore, which used to be my strong suit. Um, with failure, comes growth and through this failure through this trials season here at Coldwater it produced hope that I actually found something now that I can fix it's not just a lost cause there actually was a problem behind it and I will tell anybody out there don't carry your skill level enjoy the failures because through them produces perseverance one if you keep moving forward and two productivity you grow and move forward from it, as long as you're willing. So with this cold water week, I am super grateful. I needed it because then on Sunday, Elizabeth and I, we were able to go to church and see our friends. We ended up going to a South Bend Cubs uh, minor league game, which was super awesome. And we just had a day to ourselves. So through the, the rough day came a blessing. And sometimes you have to look at life like that. This was not ideal, obviously, because now we're out of the player of the year run and um, and we're still actually now we're kind of fighting for top four in points for the uh, regional player invitational but i'm optimistic i am sometimes you need to get beat up and set back down uh, before you can get up and start moving forward in the direction you need to be so i'm super grateful for cold water uh, it's grateful to be humbled every once in a while so now we're just gonna get back to the get our nose back to the grind be on the grind get back at it and get ourselves ready for was the next one, Grove City, which would be super cool to put together another good run there because I have had some really good performances there and I would love to win again at Grove City. So there you guys go. And sometimes you just gotta get kicked in the teeth. So hope you guys enjoy this. Keep everything straight off the hook. See you next time.